I am taking ahead this presentation with introduction to Django. Has anybody heard of Django? There are quite a few, quite a few. Okay, that's good. So, first of all, who am I? I am Utkarsh and I work with MOOC edX lab and I, apart from coding, I like birds and books. Okay. I have been making web apps since 1.5 years and since I joined this particular organization, I have been pushed and asked to work with Django and Python. It has been almost a couple of months ago. So the objectives for this particular presentation are overview of Django. I see many of you do not know Django, then those who know Django, please bear with us because we will be taking it for right from basics and I will be covering the basics only and we will unchain the Django that is Django unchanged that is that architecture we will study the architecture of it and a just a simple project on it and the flow of the project that is it no big deal. So what is Django? Django is a high level python web framework that encourages rapid development and clean and pragmatic design. It is in one sentence the complete Django has been explained. Uh, one by one I will explain that keywords being high level python web framework and clean and pragmatic design, rapid development. One more interesting thing is Django has been used in different kind of many websites. One uh, m Below you can see Dropbox, the second one can you guess the logo? Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest is written in Django. The third one, Instagram, Instagram, very good. Instagram, Instagram is also written in Django. And majority of work of Mozilla is now being shifted to Python, and they are using Django. So Django is used very widely these days. So the basic question arises: Why Django? Why? Why should I use Django? Django, as explained in the earlier slide, is a web framework. Web framework. So it is used to make web applications. So there are pretty, pretty many, many. There are many frameworks, rather languages, which use, which are used for web applications. So why new thing? First of all, it uses Python. As my colleague has already showed you the advantages of using Python. Python, as she told you, it was written by Guido Van and he joined Google and he actually encouraged to use Python at big scale. It is open source. You know the symbol, uh, what is it is called as? Penguin, but it represents Linux. <laughs> it is called as Tux. It is the logo for Linux. And the, uh, the one below it, Python, yeah, good. So basically, it is open source. So the, there is vast community for Django, which helps you to make your applications workable. So the uh, docs are very documentation is done very very in a very good manner. So that is also a plus point. Pluggability. That is, it is the Django is very loosely coupled. The Django has one main project and apps surrounding to it. It is. Uh, it can be compared with the plugs, you know, pin and the plugs. If you don't want some functionality with it, you just plug out this, uh, that functionality. It is as easy as that. So, pluggability is the main feature which was absent till now in any kind of web framework. Rapid and fast development. Here I would like to tell a bit of history about Django. Django was developed in Lawrence, uh, the magazine and newspaper industry in Kansas. Uh, United States. So they shifted to Python and uh, they had to make apps for newspaper and magazines. You see magazines and newspaper contents are very vulnerable and they change daily, right? So what they had in mind, uh, in their mind was they had to do rapid and fast development. Uh, the content, the overall layout, it used to change with the requirement and it used to change day by day. So keeping in mind they developed the Django framework. So the main feature being rapid and fast development. Scalability and stability. Since it is an open source and it has been almost 10 to 15 years Django is in the market. So it is pretty stable, pretty stable. 
and any one of you know what is MVC model view control? Yeah, we'll see about it in next slide. It is KIWS and dry. These are also two main features of Django. KIWS is keep it simple, silly. Keep it simple. So the overall framework is very simple. They have tried not to write too much of code and at the same time not little. So it's keeping it simple was a main aim while developing the Django framework. And DRY, dry. Don't repeat yourself. Say uh, you are using MySQL for retrieving your name for that matter and after few days you require same kind of functions to retrieve your surname. Okay, So you need not write the whole code for name and surname both differently. So Django provides such kind of apps, such kind of functionality that that code can be used repetitively. That is main feature is which is called as do not repeat yourself. Do you know about content management systems, Drupal, Joomla? So it is a common misconception that Django is a CMS. Uh, it is not. Django is a web framework. Some of its apps can be CMSC like Drupal and uh, Joomla, but Django is not a CMS. That is a tip point here. MVC. So what? What M stands for? Model. So this is a model. Okay. V stands for view. That is a good view from Boathouse, from IIT Bombay only, Hiranandani Skyline. And C, so what C stands for? Controller. PS4 guys might uh, correlate themselves with. But you, you see, this is not exactly what we are talking about. It's just a part of a joke. It's not uh, what we are going to see. It's rather MTV. Okay. So it's not MVC, it's MTV. So uh, in model, view controller which is being shown as MTV in Django which is a prototype of its architecture okay, which stands for not music television but model templates and views and one by one I will tell you these three concepts. Okay, View, view is what do you see, view as in till now in many web apps is perceived as how do you see it. How do you say it? But in Django, people have concentrated that what do you say? Like the one I shown, uh, the one this, it, it is not about how it is, there is one building. You, you think of it as what exactly is shown in the picture, okay? There are buildings, there is lake, there are grasses, there is sky, there is hill. What is exactly being shown in the web app is considered in the view not how it is shown templates for templates now how it is shown where should be the building where should be the grass where should be the hill and where should be the sky all these semantics are explained in templates django has its own template engine django template engine and while displaying the contents also they use their own language django template language which you will eventually use some of you will at least use it so controller like I have shown that particular remote controller, PS4 controller, what controller does is take input from somewhere else and pass it to somewhere. So somebody needs to control like uh, air control room, where to land, how to take off like that. So in Django, when the framework was designed, the controller was a task for framework itself. That is Django framework itself. The Django framework needs to take control and uh, see uh, the travel the path right, who needs what and provide them with that. And URL conf, URL conf, URL configurations are uh, passing for URL configurations, URLs literally passing URLs from functions to and from request to response. URL conf handles that. I will tell you in detail in further slides. A brief uh, introduction about installation for Django, obviously Django is written for Python, Python you need to have Python in your system. These are the commands, sudo apt-get install python and you need to install pip for that. Uh, anybody know about that pip? Okay, like apt-get, apt -get, it is Package management, package management system only. It usually 
it is responsible for installing packages, updating it, simultaneously uninstalling it. PIP provides you with that. You can see in the third command that pip install Django. So pip helps installing some kind of softwares. So after installing pip, you can install Django. Django and the command is pip install Django and the version name. How to see if Django is properly installed in your system or not is been given at the bottom that uh, particular uh, when you will type python then you should import py django and this should work very fine and as shown in the command that is in at the bottom so now i'll be showing a very small kind of project which which is not going to take much of your time it's very small so a project a project means a web app web app means a website a project that does mean it's uh, website only so here is the command django admin.py start project lotr any lotr fans here uh, good 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 so uh, what it will do is create directories like what is being shown here this is the parent directory that is lotr and in that it will automatically generate one more directory which is called as app in that there is init.py file, settings.py file, urls.py and wsgi.py. Uh, those who know Python, can you correlate where have you seen init.py file? Somewhere? Classes, packages? Packages? Know anybody? Huh, it allows you. Initial file, right? initialization used for initialization only so modules a package is nothing but collection of modules but in django it is usually a usually an empty file but it represents that the everything every app is in the form of package and these kind of python files are being used in particular packages okay so you may want to have a look once again uh, the main project being lotr is in the outer side the main app, app is in the inner side lotr and in the app there are four python files okay just make yourself clear with that because you will be working on this kind of hierarchy only so uh, i'll explain you in detail what they are components as i told you earlier init.py file is used for initialization settings.py settings.py I won't be going into the details and confuse you a bit about that, but settings.py file is responsible for database settings, which kind of database you are going to use, what kind of databases engines are going to be provided, what kind of, here there is only one app that is called as LOTR, but in practical you use too many apps, so you need to have some kind of stipulated, in the stipulated point you need to write down which apps are going to be used or not so installed apps you can have the list of apps in settings.py and from one app to other app if somebody wants to access data from other app so it usually reads settings.py third thing is urls.py there is i'm going to explain it in next slide also but urls.py python has a very unique feature it uses regular expression to read from the server which URL is typed and read it and correspondingly call the view functions which are responsible for what do you see at the output. Okay, are you getting that? Uh, URLs, URLs are written uh, in the web browser, it actually reads it, it actually reads it and it takes it and correspondingly it calls some views with respect to that the content is responded with the, your request i'll explain you later in this uh, in next slides wgs wsgi file uh, dot py file is you need not go into details of that uh, it is usually a system file which is responsible for making communication with app and the main project that is it manage.py manage.py is usually responsible for as it is shown in the right side which is in the very parent directory of the project which manages the 
project only all you need to know is it manages the project very well so uh, writing views we have created one project which is called as LOTR LOTR and we want to have some kind of you know uh, to see actually see what is happening and to see something on the web browser so all we need to do is we should write some views okay so you can see views you have to create a new file called as views.py in the directory of an app in the project the app name is LOTR the same name applies to the project that is LOTR in app we have to create a views.py file remember views.py file is only responsible for particular that app which is called as LOTR the inner one so you can see I have been I have defined one function hello and in response with that I am hello this is Bilbo so this should print on the web page okay so next slide URL conf I told you about it uh, about it earlier so I will dive into bit deep so uh, urls.py file location is in app only this url.py file is limited to particular app only you can see it in the red uh, red color see uh, as I told you earlier every app is considered as class or what what he has uh, what he has told us that it is considered as class or packages in my language so from my site dot views or rather LOTR dot views import hello see in views function we have defined one function called as hello so all we are doing is importing that function and in urls dot patterns I am telling this uh, this uh, angular bracket dollar sign can you make something out of it is it regular expression is it uh, anybody know about regular expressions Achha, okay so if very few okay so you need not go into depth uh, deep knowledge about regular expression as you will progress through the development you will get to know about that very well see that particular regular expression says if the URL contains hello at the end if the URL contains hello at the end then you should call the hello function which is written in the views.py file and uh, where we are responding with the hello this is Bilbo statement okay sometimes you know regular expression gets very ugly uh, that's what I have written in the below uh, at the very bottom there is big uh, regular expression so though they are very hard to understand and hard to write also you need not care about that it's as soon as you will progress through the projects you will be easily uh, grasping that that is it so the main part uh, run server so in particular the very upper directory in the project directory you should you should be in that directory only and for running the server you should write python manage.py run server so this was about the very first project that is printing hello I am Bilbo at the web page so it gets very confusing at first sight what is where uh, how it is written where, from where it is going to where so the this is what I did in a nutshell that web browser from web browser you are seeing the URL URL say for, for in this particular project we will see hello in the URL as soon as hello is retrieved by urls.py or url dispatcher it recognizes from urls patterns entries that if it is hello then redirect it to views.py file where hello is written so it will call the hello function from views.py and it will respond with the statement hello this is bilbo hello this is bilbo is being written in the hello function in views.py here you can see in views.py and then after interacting with views.py if it if at all some kind of advanced app which needs to communicate with databases it will 
for that particular thing they will communicate with models.py eventually with databases database will eventually give the results what it what it is been asked for then models.py then again it uh, sends the request back to views.py and then again to web browser this is overall what happens with the django this is the very basic principle what happens in django you may use a high end databases very complex queries with it but this is what you do in django uh, be clear about it we have uh, this is our some food for thoughts uh, models and admin interface uh, you see as i told you earlier that this particular django framework was not developed in any kind of academic institutions it was developed by a magazine company who who were trying to develop a web app which changes very rapidly so uh, django has one very good interface admin as you will dive more into django then you will come to know about it it's a very good framework about which deals with the databases and uh, it's a pretty good interactive kind of uh, app only which helps you change too many things about databases that is it and one more thing one thing i like to follow is coding standards coding standards were you may want to go through pepet coding standards which are used for django development it is always good to follow coding standards right from the start otherwise reading others disastrous code is way to it takes too much time so uh, use the coding standards very wisely further reads i would suggest you to go to django site where there are four to five parts of polls tutorials it is called as polls tutorials they are very basic and very informative i guess you should go through that i guess you should go through that the django book the django book there is one site called django book it has been explained in detail about django and its components in detail so you can go through that also one of my personal favorite is two scoops of django uh, the writer makes the language is so lucid that you come to know about the very basic concepts about django very easily so i would suggest you to go with two scoops of django otherwise google is always at your help so this is how we unchange the django thank you thank you for bearing us thank you